In the year 1997, the future is in chaos and turmoil. Mankind is on the brink of extinction. Brave survivors band together and build a time displacement apparatus to receive a signal from a parallel future. This transmission is the Boondicast. To the Voondacast, the official podcast of Vundablog.com, the podcast that knows that when there's a strange shadow in your freaking house, you just got to move out, call a real estate agent, just give up, just escape from the hideous hauntings. <laughs> I am your host, Stephen, and with me today is the glorious Danielle. He's pointing at me. Yeah. And then you should say your name, Danielle. Oh, okay. D- is yeah. this just going to be audio or are we going to have the video too? Cause... No, just audio. Just audio. Okay. Um, and also with me, our fabulous co host, <laughs> the number one. Number one D-Rock. heavyweight champion, D Rock. Uh, coming, coming at you with they, them pronouns, as always. It or has, maybe not always. It has been a long time since our voices have uh, coagulated into a podcast. Coagulated. <laughs> what? What's wrong? Coagulation. It's it's Halloween. It's spooky. What yeah. coagulates? We coagulate into a podcast. What's wrong with it? We just my verbiage is too abhorrent for you. We slowly <laughs> sludge onto the microphone. Even, that's how I, I guess I feel like I'm coagulating. That's kind of yeah. how 2020s felt. So I guess yes. it's an apt metaphor. That's so. Fair. Uh, we've been marching through quarantine. I've watched in quarantine a bunch of Wishmaster movies and Friday the Thirteenth movies. And there was a, a if you want me to remember anything that I quarantine. watched literally la- before all you yesterday, watched was your name. That's all you've seen. I I have I literally could not <laughs> even tell you anymore. Every day has bled together, so I'm I'm very focused <laughs> on the fact that it's October, and that's very exciting for me. But yeah, I how mean, do you not remember what you watched yesterday when literally we watched seven seasons of Star Trek Voyager? Oh no, for, I remember that for like. <laughs> Four weeks for yeah. the entirety of September, exactly. basically. Exactly. That's all I remember. It was just us in the Delta Quadrant. I mean, I'm, fair, I'm sure there's a few things that stand out. Like, I'm sure you remember I May Destroy You and uh, and Lovecraft Country. Like, those are, those are things that, like, those are for me, like, those two. And, like, there's, like, two movies that I've watched that, That's like, bad. just absolutely blew me away. And everything else is kind of, like... A, a step under that. TV stands out to me more because there's more of it. <laughs> That's about right. it. So, like, I remember, yeah, I remember the shows I've been watching. Like, uh, P Valley was really great, and Lovecraft Country, and I've been. Still, by the way, I'm I've still not caught up on Lovecraft country. country, so no spoilers. I need to watch like the last three episodes. I think. Okay. So okay. I don't think we're talking about. We're not oh, yeah. going to that, so you're safe. No spoilers to worry about. What, oh, sure. what anything else you want to shout out that you've been watching, D Rock? I know you had a little listicle. Yeah, I do have a little list. Um, I've just like that's that's kind of been. <clears throat> I feel like I haven't even been doing that as like as much watching as I could have been doing, but I've watched a lot of shit since uh since quarantine started and there's a few things that have really stood out for me i mean the 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 major major standout things um have been 
I may destroy you for sure is like just um I mean we've yeah, yeah, for sure we haven't gotten a chance to podcast about it, but we've talked about like how fucking incredibly like on a completely different level that show is from like all, from like basically anything else I've ever seen. Like I don't know if I've ever seen a show or certainly not. I mean, like, how could a movie possibly come anywhere close? But just those eight ep- or ten episodes, or I, I can't remember exactly how many it was. Nine, I think. Were just like, I've never seen anything like that. It was just like a force of nature. Yeah, um, really it just completely blew me away with the nuance and just the way that it like looks at so many issues from like a million different angles and like challenges every assumption about what you think is happening and i just i was just blown away by it totally and um lovecraft country has also been blowing my mind even though i'm not really caught up on it but just it's like so dense with like stuff and like it, it's it combines like high art of what it's doing with like just so much fun that shows so much fun and it's still like high-minded like really artistic viewing but it's just it and it, it but it's not afraid to have fun and that's like I think that kind of sets it apart from other things that it might be lumped in with, but you can't because it's just, it's, it's so many things. And Steven, you called it. I remember we were having a conversation about it and you were saying, yo, I think they're going to start, they're going to like do each episode as like a different genre or different, like kind of like horror or action or whatever. And the very next episode I remember was the, the like Indiana Jones fucking action adventure episode. I was like, Stephen fucking called it, man. This is this is exactly what they're doing. It's super cool. Well, apparently the book is an anthology, so they were, you know, the oh, that oh okay. They, they they that's the way they adapted it. They they right. put it all together. Mm-hmm. But gotcha. Brought that anthology aspect, which is one of the most fun parts about the show, is you never know. <laughs> which direction <laughs> hey, dogs, we don't need a commercial. What are you talking about? <laughs> Yeah, that's, I mean, it totally feels that way because each episode is so, like, like, closed off from the next, in a way. Like, it's very, it's very episodic, but it's still very, like, it's, it's telling a linear story, but it's doing it in such a way that's, like, very, each episode is very much its own story within the story. So that makes sense that it's an anthology. That's, I also that's interesting. That, um, I feel like it very much is an expression of all this sort of genre play that has been kind of denied to specific people for so long, like mm. on any kind of like you know on a major way that they really get to get. So I think I think on a level it's 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 throwing everything because it really wants to put their their vision of like these genres that have just been so they're just so iconic to like american cinema um and then just constantly present it in this in this in this new way and what's really Mm. cool about it is just the people that are involved and i think that's what's so spectacular is because that you know i i really enjoy how it how it plays with genre and especially how it incorporates historical um moments in it all the right. time. um you always like ev- there's so many easter eggs for every every episode uh yeah. down from the music to the <coughs> moments to moments in the show um that are just like snippets literally snippets and images from history so yeah i've been really enjoying right. it yeah like i mean i i i feel like yeah like almost like there's all these like classic American film genres that have historically been so white dominated and now they're kind of setting using those settings to like give people of color their Indiana Jones action adventure and their haunted house and you know like 
I, th I feel like that's kind of what you're what you're getting at and just kind of trying to reflect back but mm -hmm. yeah that's that's a that's a good point what else is on the list um so as far as tv shows just like really quickly um out of the things that I've been watching during quarantine, I mean, what we do in the shadows. I don't know if you guys, you, 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 you yeah, watched that's show. one of the shows that we oh, got. Yeah, that was one of the shows we got through that, quarantine uh, for sure. I don't think I've ever seen a show that makes me laugh that hard and that many times per episode as that show. That shows so like Jermaine Clement and his crew are just like fucking geniuses, and all the actors are also fucking geniuses because they just, they kill me. Especially fucking Guillermo. Guillermo is the best <laughs> ever. I'm definitely going to want to rewatch some particular episodes before, mm -hmm. on or on Halloween itself. Yeah, Dev, that would be an awesome, yeah, we could like do like a live tweet of that or something like that. That's totally. But yeah, for sure. The, the Baron episode and uh What's another one? I can't remember. There was another one in season two that really stood out, but I can't remember what it was now. But that Baron episode where they take Baron out on the town and shit is yeah. just fucking kills me. <laughs> so Definitely good. the Mark Hamill uh, Daytona. Yes. Jackie Daytona episode is yes. got to be up Jackie here. Daytona is great. Yeah. So, um, I, think genre, I think genre TV has really been killing it this year. I have to say. Yeah, it's just, it's it's a comfortable nook to know that you're just going to be in this, you know, this genre hole and you can explore all the crevices yeah, of I it. I also think the people that have been given opportunity to create, like, new genre TV have really kind of brought something new and fresh to the table. So yeah. It doesn't feel like the same old stuff. Well, I think it, a, a big part of it is that genre storytelling has become so much more legitimized just in the last decade as as a, as a medium. Yeah. So much great art has been coming out of genre storytelling over the last 10 years that it's become undeniable that this is a legit art form. And now, they're, now it's being treated that way and you're getting all of this amazing stuff coming out. Yeah. I hope it keeps going that way. Yeah, for sure. Um, another one that I, I got really into was The Sinner. Steven, I know your parents are really, or at least your mom is, she always comments on my Facebook when I'm watching that. She's rocking that. Really it's, it's a really good, it's a really good, it's a really good, like, mystery show with, like, kind of, uh, psychological thriller elements, and Bill Pullman is, like, actually really good in that show. I've never thought that I'd say that Bill Pullman is good in anything, <laughs> but he really is. Like, he's really good. And Jessica Biel's really good in the first season. And there's this little kid actor who's really, really good in the second season. And an, uh, that one of the actresses from The Leftovers is in it, and she's really fucking good. So that was a really good one. Um, I got really into, right around the time that everyone was super into Tiger King, I was like, fuck that. And I got really into uh, Wild Wild Country. Rebelling. I choose a superior documentary. Yeah. I just, no, I just wanted to be contrarian, you know? So I got super into Wild Wild Country, and that shit is fucking bonkers. Holy shit. Um, and then, as an honorable mention, I watched uh, High Score on Netflix, which is kind of a very... A, f a fairly brief uh, run through of like the history of the video game industry. And I really enjoyed that. It wasn't anything spectacular, but it was just a lot of fun to, to go through that history. Any other honorable mentions? No, that was the only honorable mention. I, now I'm going to kind of move it on, move it on up to, to movies. And um, so there's two movies once again, that like really stood out above like anything. Um, yeah, really stood out above anything else. Uh, the first one is um, directed by Alice Wu. It's called The Half of It. It's on Netflix. And that movie is just, the whole time I was watching that movie, I was just like, with my hands on my head, like, this is so 
beautiful like just like such a beautifully made film the cinematography and the story and the characters and like everything about it just like was so and it's only like an hour and a half movie and to do this to do so much in an hour and a half it was just it was just so 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 well done i i still haven't watched it again because i want to give it the attention even the second time that I watch it, that I gave it the first, um, but I really want to watch it like a million more times and just like take it apart and like analyze it because it's just so amazing. And, and the other one, uh, what's that? I haven't heard of that. That's very interesting. Oh, it's great. I it's funny because uh, a, one of the main things that I've been doing during uh, during the quarantine, at least, especially like more recent months. I've been trying to watch as many movies directed by women as possible. And I have not regretted that decision a single moment. Literally, I made like a top 10 movies that I've watched in quarantine and seven of them are movies directed by women. That and was one so... of the cool things about the show P-Valley on Stars was that yeah. it's about strippers and the deep south but it, all the episodes are directed by women and written it's by written women. by women oh nice so it gives it yeah, a the different flavor netflix has like a fucking treasure trove of great movies directed by women um the other film that stood out is also on netflix and also directed by a woman is called the kindergarten teacher and that movie is just like a fucking masterpiece of rising tension and just like raw like like it's like a train wreck as like a very slow train wreck that you're just like no 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 she's not gonna no no it's just like oh my god and the the last scene is just oh my god it's amazing it's so amazing i would highly 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 recommend the kindergarten teacher and uh maggie gyllenhaal yeah. maggie gyllenhaal is excellent in that movie also maybe one of the best roles she's ever done like she and and you know i haven't seen that many of her movies but i've heard other people say that too so like she's really good she's she is really good she's got chops she does as they say in the biz as they see, yeah. She's got chops. <laughs> and that should bring us now towards Spooktober. And I'm going hard towards Spooktober. I don't think we should say Halloween. Well, so I actually do have a few more movies that I can run through, like, really, really fast. Uh, just because I had, like, ten movies that I wanted to... But I'll just mention them because I want to, like, give these people, you know press if we if like sure. not that anyone actually listen to this but you know if they do um book smart on hulu is fucking amazing another one directed by a woman that's a great movie very funny i really love uh the edge of 17 which is no longer on netflix there's another movie on netflix called edge of 17 that is not the same movie as this one, but this one is uh, with, uh, fuck, I can't remember her name now, but um, it's really good. Uh, Lady Bird is also amazing. Another one directed by a woman. Um, this movie, Mr. Roosevelt with uh, Noelle Wells, she was, I think she, I think the most famous thing she's done is like, she was in Master of None um but she wrote directed and starred in this movie that i was like super impressed by it um and let me just give one more shout out to well maybe one and a half one more shout out to a movie called like father that's also on netflix and directed by a woman with uh kristen bell and kelsey Grammer. Just really cute little sweet uh, story about a, 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 a estranged daughter and father who like happened to end up on a honeymoon cruise that was meant for her and her 
uh, fiance that she was supposed to marry and didn't. And it's really, and Seth Rogen's in it too. It's really, really sweet and really <laughs> funny and really good. And then the other half of a shout out to, I don't know if you guys have seen Class Action Park yet. Yes. Yeah, we saw it. It was oh good. Oh my fucking God. <laughs> what is wrong with these people? <laughs> I watched the documentary. It was just like an, it's just an examination of chaos. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't a particularly great documentary, but just seeing what this park was and being like, what? No, no, it was it was effective. Not all documentaries managed to be that funny. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, true. that's a very rare thing to that be able to, guy that you to pull off. The guy that you I think loved. his name was like Chris Carjack or something like that. <laughs> well, I don't think it was Chris Carjack. Chris Carjack. <laughs> That's was his it, Jersey name. Uh, That's his name. Huh? Was no. it John Hodgman? No. No. no, no. <laughs> Maybe I'm remembering that wrong. Yeah. No, he was like this, like, uh, Chris like Carter. this, like he, he he was a guy who had grown up in the area, and he was oh, like yeah, yeah. And white, and he had like cheekbones. Cheekbones. He was one of the guys they interviewed, though. He was being interviewed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, he was funny. He was really funny. Yeah, he's like a mid-level comedian that like no one really knows who he is, but everyone knows who he is. You know what I mean? He does a lot of small roles. Chris Carjack. Yeah. That's what I'm Chris getting. Chris Carjack. Carjack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to just call him Chris Carjack is what yeah, I'm Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, that's, that sounds good to me. Yeah. Okay, now moving on to Spooktober. Let's do that now. Chris Gethard. Chris Gethard, I knew it was what. Okay. You were so that's, close. That's, that's oh, more Jeff. ridiculous than the name you made up for him. Christopher Paul Gethard. I'm Chris Gethard. Uh, or is it Gethard? I think, oh, it's, no, I think it's Gethard. Yeah, I think it's Gethard. No, like every school bully, it's Gethard. It's Gethard. Get <laughs> harder. Get you harder. Have, that man had to learn how to be funny with a man like with a name like Gethard in his life. Mm. Yeah, that guy. Right, yeah. That was the armor. He's. You know. I wish I was Chris Carjack. <laughs> <laughs> Next time you see him, just yell Chris Carjack and see if he turns around. <laughs> You're my you should kid. be like, hey, I should use that. Okay. So now we will summon the spirit of Chris Carjack O' Lantern. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the first film that I wa- that we watched that me and Danny. No, no, no. Oh, no. Before we start, okay. I want to talk about. This is the first Halloween in quarantine. The that first is. one. Assuming we're going to have many more. I don't I know. sure hope it's the last. The world is a mess. I just know. I'm just, I, I know that like out there right now, there's basically become two schools in America. People who are still taking coronavirus seriously. Yeah. And people who are like, I want to go outside. And right. take my chances. And I, I'm pretty sure that everyone in this uh, conversation is still taking it pretty seriously. I haven't yeah. gone anywhere. Right. Um, <laughs> so, what are you trying to do for Spooktober? Is it just watching a lot of movies? I've started making like clay crafts too for Halloween, and I kind of want to do some baking and things like that. Is that all you're going to do? Are you going to decorate your house? How are you going to handle trick or treating? Because I know people are going to try to trick or treat, but I don't want them knocking on my door. <laughs> right. I There's think that, be a lot of people leaving bowls of candy outside. That's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm I, gonna leave. Bowls I'd be like, of candy. we should, do that anyway. So <laughs> I think you should leave a bowl of candy, but just stand outside and like 20 feet away and just like scream at them. <laughs> do not I, take we, too many. We have candy. a ring. We don't even need to do that. We have a ring. That's true. You could we just be like, don't them. take <laughs> more. <laughs> Just put a ghost thing in front of the ring <laughs> camera, a little, a little sheet. Cooper child. Yeah. I'm, or you will be cursed. Well, here's my thing too: is I'm concerned about contamination. So I was right. thinking of making little baggies so that the kids could just grab them. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm very, I'm being very craft minded about this because I'm like, well, how? Cool. Because I know that people are going to show up on October 31st, or, and I'm going to want to kill them if they Or you anymore. could just put a bottle of Lysol on the sidewalk. Oh, sure. And tell everyone they have to oil up before they come over. <laughs> Spray the Lysol in your mouth, kids, before you eat the candy. No, just a little bottle of mitonin. 
<laughs> um, yeah. I think that if uh, see my fear about decorating is that quarantine's gonna hit us afterwards and we're not gonna want to take down the decorations. Quarantine's hitting that's us gonna now. be a lot of work. I mean, quarantine's been hitting us for six months, so longer than six months, mm-hmm. but yeah. yeah, no. Uh, well, yeah, we're coming up on seven months now, I guess, huh? Woo! Yay! Yay, the long haul, the haunted seven. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, I think reading spooky stuff. I definitely want to listen to some, uh, some like ghost stories and stuff. I actually found, in terms of, I, I think that there's going to be a really good horror movie made one day about or in the very near future about the experience of quarantining for a long time and being so isolated i mean people have done stories about isolation i actually think the movie we watched tonight kind of dealt with that kind of isolation really well well what mm. a teaser i do i do i think what a so. great teaser in my opinion it dealt with a lot of things but i i think it had an element of what you how life is when you're like locked in your own home and there's nowhere to go so do you want to start there since you just tried I don't want to I want to start whatever I'm just saying Halloween quarantine is gonna be it's we're kind of like living in a real life horror movie on a level it's just yeah. much slower and stupider <laughs> I mean, there's, there's there's movies kind of like I mean like 10 Cloverfield Lane is is that yeah it's just like these three people in a bunker driving each other well one of them being super domineering and fucking driving the other ones crazy. And then, you know, all hell breaks loose. Um, but yeah, there, I think there, there'll be an influx maybe of movies in that vein that are just inspired by the, the like crushing cabin fever that we're all feeling right now. Or at least those of us who are still staying inside. <sighs> They should yeah. make that movie. Make that movie where there are some people who are like, don't go out there. <coughs> there are zombies. And other people are like, nah, it's fine. No, nah. you're right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get immunity. Fuck that. It's zombie immunity. The only way to beat a zombie is to punch a zombie. Exactly. Uh, I mean, that, that would kind of be the perfect uh, coronavirus satire would be a zombie movie like that where people are just like oh it's fine you know as long as we stay six feet away it's fine <laughs> and then just getting overrun by zombies everyone just walking out with broomsticks like get away six <laughs> we haven't come across a zombie movie yet i believe that you we- had zombies on your day one of your schedule oh yeah so- I had zombies but i only i only watched the only movie i watched yesterday unfortunately was uh cabin in the woods but we're both we're Stephen and I are doing one list and you are doing another. So we're yeah. doing the no Nightmare on Film Nightmare Street. on Film Street um list, Podcast. which isn't it's it's cool because it's it's a thirty day thirty one day one and it has kind of just more some of its genre specific stuff right nineties eighties eighties horror nineties horror um today it was horror comedy um but sometimes it's just like leaves or like something right. very visually specific and we're just trying to get like one of those in a day yeah so today right. for horror comedy i finally got to see and fulfilled a life dream of watching leprechaun in the hood oh shit and oh, that? i feel dumber <laughs> Was it everything you expected it to be? It, no, it was worse. <laughs> really? It was it worse? Was so it's, worse. It's amazing because you can tell that they had Warwick Davis in the leprechaun <laughs> for outfit days. for like two or three days. Because <laughs> there's so many scenes where people are dying and you just see like the leprechaun's hands or you just see him from like the back. Or like it just fades to black and like they're like dying totally off it's screen. Just, you know how some movies... <laughs> you, know? you know how some movies the budget the the budget deficit is so glaring yeah <laughs> you can just you just and i actually feel and like they were trying to no, make up for funnier, it with reps what was yeah what was funnier oh is my god you could actually see the budget getting less and less like as they were oh, like yeah over the course no, of the movie yeah. over the course of by, the movie by, by the last scene of the movie they can't afford a crowd <laughs> they anymore <couldn't> afford a <laughs> 
And then, and then all the lights are just totally black. So it's just a person singing by himself with like fake crowd noise around tell, him. You can tell that every scene with Warwick Davis is where they spent money. Yeah. And then yeah. every scene without him there, they were like, five dollars. Just stand outside. Talk. Stand outside at my apartment, please. The lighting. Everything about it was so ridiculous. And Ice T oh, is in it. And Ice T, like, literally, his character like dies like seven times <laughs> and then it's like a fake out death every single time or he survives oh, but, or like he just loses a finger like it's hilarious you know what was crazy too is that i just feel like at some point in that movie they just got lost in the weeds and they were like for like 20 minutes of that film well they, they, like, they were just filling time anymore? talking they about were, their record deals yeah they really <laughs> were, like, oh man for for black americans to get record deals to get out of the Comptons. It was so. Amazing. And what's amazing is that there's another leprechaun because they it was so good that there's a leprechaun in the hood too. Two, which I don't. Even know. though it was Leprechaun Five, they made in the hood too. <laughs> so there's a Leprechaun Five Part Two. Yes. I guess. I guess. <laughs> that, that makes, you just figured. I couldn't make sense of it. You Best it. part for me was that in order to make Leprechaun rhyme with hood, they changed. Leprechaun and just shortened it to Lep. Lep in the hood. So by the end of the movie, that just they're kind singing. of sounds like leprosy. Leper. So every time yeah. he said Lep in the hood, I'm like, is there a, is there an outbreak of yeah. leprosy in the hood? Because <laughs> like, like, the leprechaun can't rap the word leprechaun. He's no. got to say Lep, Lep in the hood in the is hood. up to no good. It's up to no good. Lep in the hood is up to no good. And he, like, he kept such filthy things. There was a lot of like, he's gonna get laid, and I was like, yeah. nobody wants to see this the leprechaun have sex. Yeah, the leprechaun made uh made Lots hoes that controlled people. What was one rap before with green I, eyes? Before I something. Oh god, that one was actually really funny. My favorite Come moment. Come closer to me, and, and let me get something, some sass before I'm tapping that ass or some yeah. ridiculous. Oh, like, when I'm telling you these raps are... You little lass, I'm gonna tap that ass. Oh, that's like that. right. You're, you're a, you're a fine-looking lass. Let me tap that ass. <laughs> My favorite moment of the movie is there's a character named Butch who is a virgin the whole movie, and the whole movie they're ragging on him oh, for God. being a virgin. Yeah. And as oh, no. he dies... His dying words are, is there a pussy in heaven? No, 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 no. <laughs> he goes, he doesn't say, is there a pussy in heaven? He goes to his friend, he goes, is there a pussy heaven? Is there a pussy heaven? <laughs> Meaning, is there a heaven just full of <laughs> just pussy. Gen genitalia that I can lose mm. my virginity with? Like, I Not, no, like, no actual women, just, just pussy. Just pussy. <laughs> Just the clouds are just like full of vaginas and you just fuck the clouds. <laughs> and that's why it's distinctly the classic among the entire Leprechaun oeuvre. Yeah, <laughs> oeuvre. <laughs> oh, wow. Genius actually has the Leprechaun rap from Warwick Davis. Oh, my God. And so, Warwick Davis can't rap. Oh, it's that's the best. The, that's the best and, part. And also because he has to maintain rap. that Irish, that terrible Irish accent, so he's strong. Oh, yeah, of course. Let me just read you the first verse, because everyone needs to hear this. <laughs> okay. He, 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 ha. I come from the land of the Irish Spring. Dublin's the place where I learned my thing. From the Emerald Isle to your place in the hood, I'm a man of green, comes to do no good. Lep in the hood, comes to do no good. Lep Wait, did, you say, did, did you say a man of green? I'm a man of green, comes a to man do of no green. good. Lep in the hood, comes to do no good. Yeah. Oh, he was also really into smoking weed, too. Yeah, that was so they yeah, trick him. And they put clover, the, Butch does research, and he learns that if you put clover leaf and put the essence of clover leaf in, into the leprechaun, his powers get weakened. So they have a clover leaf lace joint that they smoke with him, <laughs> him so that they can try to conquer him. He gets I, I, th I think we have a new challenge, Steve, and it's time we gotta, we gotta smoke a clover leaf lace joint. Whoa. See what happens. Lap in the hood comes the no good. Done.
Okay. So that killed many brain cells for us in a, yes. a way. Yeah. Good times. What did you oh, now I'm kind of jealous. I'm sl I'm kind of <laughs> sad. My my horror comedy day is like way at the end of the month. Oh. So I don't know what I'm gonna do for that one. But well, uh, there's, there's plenty we're of just, We're mixing it up every day. We're just hitting our yeah. for like one movie of yeah. the day. And then like I've been, I kind of want to try to see if I can see like do days. do whole days worth. But like, that's like that's kind of my like bare minimum of it. I want to do at least like one movie that's with the theme yeah. each day, and then you know maybe it's good to like give myself some flexibility. Other than that, yesterday we watched Sleepy Hollow for our autumn leaves. So oh, I've never seen that. Oh, you got it. yeah. It's on Netflix yeah. currently. Nice. Sleepy Hollow was on Netflix. Yeah, I wrote it down. Let me check. Let me check my notes that I wrote down. Things that... One of the things that's been, that's been really annoying me, like since yesterday, oh, is oh, okay. like I've been I've been planning my uh, my Spooktober watch list for like the entire month of September, <laughs> and then of course every streaming service on October first is like, yep. here's all these new horror movies. I'm like, fuck, man, I didn't know you had any of this shit. What the fuck? Yeah. I have to rethink my whole list. Can't change the, the the rules in the middle of the game, man. What the hell? Right. I think I think it's lists are big this month because that's basically what everyone has. Yeah, right. <laughs> Just sit at home and stare and stuff. So, what did you watch yesterday? What was your watch along? My yesterday, since it was Zombie Day, and I I, I wanted to like kind of kick off the Halloweenathon with a with a bit a little bit of a bang. So I decided to live tweet my favorite all-time horror movie, which is Cabin in the Woods, which <laughs> is technically a zombie movie because the, the one that was selected for that one was Zombie Redneck Torture Family. So it's zombies. Um, I was like, yeah, it's technically zombies, so I'm just going to fucking, you know, because it's my all-time favorite. That's a perfect choice for the first of the month. Especially that's, that's technically a horror comedy as well. So. Yes, it is. Actually. I guess it kind of is. So yeah. That note as well. It, it it hits so many genres at once. It does. Yeah. It's that's what I love about it. I love it as like an explanation of every other horror movie that's ever happened. Like, oh, this is what happened, and all those other. It was these people sending, you know, Freddy or Jason or whatever the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> add a bunch of kids to to sacrifice to the old gods. Yeah, and it's it's so rife with like if any movie is going to get like if any movie deserves to have like a bunch of crappy direct to video sequels. Pre prequels or sequels, like I would totally watch yeah, stupid prequels and sequels for all the stuff on the every single yeah, I want a, I want a movie play. for every single one of those things in one of those little cells. That would be so fucking Maybe dope. What if they made like an anthology film where they play and like ten or fifteen? And movies. I want a prequel of the old gods ruling the earth too. Whoa. That would be super dope. Also, that would be like your <laughs> Matrix. Uh, that would be like your Animatrix. Um, yeah, exactly. I, oh, I love the Animatrix. Well, I love the second Renaissance. That's the one. Well, that would be like your second Renaissance the explanation. Yeah, for sure. No, that would be super cool. I've always wanted there to be a second Renaissance movie, but, you know, that's just me. <laughs> of course. But instead, we're getting Matrix 4 with Keanu. Which will also oh be God. great, I'm sure. You know. I I doubt it, but we never know. I doubt it, but we'll yeah. Uh, I like the two sequels too, but we're getting off track. Uh, so yesterday I watched Cabin in the Woods for my zombie movie. Today was Supernatural, uh, so I watched The Curse of La Llorona, which I really liked a lot. I mean, as somebody who is currently trying to write a theological horror movie. This spoke to me in so many ways. Like, the theology of this movie is so fucking, like, on point for me, at least. Uh, just the way that it plays with the kind of commingling and the tension between the Christian and the pagan. Mm -hmm. um, 
and you know the way it situates each of those traditions again in 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 the struggle against evil where you know Christ, christianity is like there but pagan is really what's like cuz and and especially the ending where it's so it's so perfectly like catholic slash pagan that the ending of the movie is her being destroyed by being stabbed with the cross that is made of the wood from the tree that witnessed her sins because of course a christian would say it's the cross that killed her yeah. but to me it's the wood that killed her and that's 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 much more pagan and that's what i love about that because the history of christianity is so much of appropriating pagan shit and calling it our own and that is a perfect crystallization i think of that phenomenon in a great fucking horror ending so i love that i wonder if i just struggled with that movie because i i just i didn't like the casting of linda cardinelli yeah i mean i I, I read i read a little bit of an interview with the director who is latino Mm-hmm. Um, who and he talked about wanting to have her as an outsider so that she could be the one to kind of ask all these questions mm-hmm. and like you know get the 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 mythology of La Llorona explained to her so that you could get it explained to the audience. Um, which makes which sense. makes sense. It was a little random to see fucking freaks and geeks Linda Car- Cardellini in the middle of this like extremely Latino and Latina and Latinx uh, mythology movie. The wife of Hawkeye. No, I don't know. I don't know. I just, that movie didn't resonate with me like that. There were a couple moments that I found interesting, but like, I don't know. It just, it didn't resonate. And and what's funny is that you watched that today and then I watched another La Llorona <laughs> But on mine, Shutter, on Shutter, but mine yeah. is the film by Jairo Bustamante. Yeah, mine is. I want to watch that one too. And it, I really, really liked it. It's a very slow burn, but it was so powerful. I think because it's, it's actually about genocide. <laughs> like oh, wow. you're like, oh, it's a ghost story. Um, yeah, it is about genocide. <laughs> Right. And it's really, I, I thought that the way that he framed it, 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 it for, so, for people who are into, like, I actually think this is a good juxtaposition because I think people who are into more um, died in the wool horror would appreciate the curse, the curse of La Llorona more. Because there's but, more character, there's yeah, more there's, mythology. Uh, yeah, no, and also just it's more ghost movie traditional because the yeah. character is like she has a scary face mm-hmm. and she's got makeup there is on. A lot, there's a lot of horror cliche in that movie and I can yeah. understand why somebody, That's if, probably if somebody, one of the- if somebody wasn't able to latch onto the theology the way I did, yeah. I could see it being a very generic horror movie for, for someone who didn't kind of like latch onto that. Like that. And that's what I'm saying. So some people would like that versus... Yeah. The like La Llorona that I watched that was way more psychological in nature mm, and mm-hmm. and honest and political and mm. and kind of really m- very much about um, trauma as a living entity. Oh, um, nice. it's, it's actually based on um, a true story about an actual genocide, um, but they oh, yeah. they adapted it um, and made it about a general who ordered um or well the dispute is he ordered the deaths of thousands of indigenous mayans and the indigenous people and they've been trying for years to get this declared as genocide and trials going on but he's an old man he's got alzheimer's um and and he's got guns and he's got guns no and and it's and it's basically it is really centered around the idea of um it is about this family it's about the general's family but it's really also about the craving for justice for people who have been so harmed and what's really cool about the story 
is that I don't, I don't think that they, I think that this is one of the ghost stories that I've seen where they don't place any judgment on the ghost. Like you actually mm. feel sorry for yeah, the sympathetic. ghost. You feel sympathetic for the ghost. You're sometimes you're kind of rooting for the ghost. You're like, yeah, you, you do that. Right. What's really brilliant about this movie too. And, um, is uh, the thing that really got me about it. And like I said, it's slow. So it's, it's not, it's, it's worth the time, but like yeah. you get 30 minutes in and you're like, is, you know, yeah. Something spooky it, gonna feels, happen. it feels more like a, like a traditional drama for the first 30 minutes than it does yeah. or a familial drama than it does. And it is, it's all of those things, but really the most amazing backdrop. And this is why I kind of compared it to isolation is, what ends up happening is after the general's trial, um, protesters encircle his house and his family. Oh. And they can't go anywhere. And there's just a steady soundtrack, drumbeat of these people outside his window saying things equivalent to no justice, no peace. Right. People you, united will never be divided. And they're holding up pictures of dead loved ones who were lost in this genocide and it's constantly there and they're drumming and they're singing and it's almost kind of like they are the ones summoning the ghost La oh, wow. and it's a retelling of the La Llorona story through the lens of indigenous people and it's so well done. I was I was really blown away with this movie. I think it's beautiful. I think it's sad. I think it's <laughs> Uh, it's not like it's not like scary. Like I don't think it's scary in that traditional, very traditional. Yeah, a few pop out scares. Yeah, it has a few pop out scares, but it's really mostly about a sense of unease. Mm. And yeah, I don't know. I just I the the idea of like that their the family is in lockdown, and it's kind of like it's so brilliant how you show the unraveling of the family because it's not just about the fact that there's spooky stuff happening in the house. It's like every day outside, they just hear this drumbeat of people calling for their family to, to serve, to, to be to have, you know, to, to understand what they did to people mm. and, and, answer and answer for it. And, and he won't, he doesn't want to answer for it, of course. And in his mind, right. he did nothing wrong. It's really well done. It was really like a well done movie, and and visually, it's it, it, at times it feels like very simple. Yeah, because they'll just have like a wide shot, and they'll just slowly push it in, and just have like a long shot where it just keeps on pushing in and pushing in, and it gives yeah. you like this sense of dread, but it also pulls you into the scene and what people are saying and how they're feeling. So it was very, very, very effective. It was, it was I very like nice. That. Oh, it's available on Shutter currently this <clears throat> October. This yeah, I definitely want to check that one out. That sounds awesome. And it's ironic that we both got La Llorona's. Yeah, um, it is. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I mean, that was kind of that. That just happened to be on my list for today because today is Supernatural Day. So, and then tomorrow is True Story Day. So that should be an interesting one too. Well, that's depressing. True story. <laughs> Yeah, true story. Yeah, I know that. So out. I have, uh, I have the Hills Have Eyes, and I have The Exorcist, and then I also have this movie called Lords of Chaos. That's about um, these these guys in the Norwegian black metal scene. This is a true story. Uh, these guys in the Norwegian black metal scene, and like basically, like all the like church burnings and like fucking. One of one of the members, like the singer of this band, Mayhem, basically like murdered one of the other members of the band. Wow. And it's, yeah. So like, I can't wait to see that because I've been hearing these stories for a while, ever since I was I started getting into black metal in like the early two thousands. So it should be really interesting. Tomorrow for us is anthology, which. That's good. We, there's a lot of good anthology horror movies. VHS one. I've never seen VHS. That's another one Ooh, I like. And I, I love found footage. I actually recommend. Yeah, I recommend both VH one. No, I like two better. You than like one. two better than one? I think yeah. two has the more flashy. Yeah, it has that amazing yeah. one from Indonesia. I think is. Oh my yeah, god, that's that really good. Ooh. Anyway, 
Yeah, there's, yeah, so the VHS ones, um, the ABCs of Death is an okay anthology movie. Uh, it's, got, it's got its ups and downs. The thing with anthology horror is that it tends, it always tends to kind of have some highs and some lows. Right. There's, it's yeah. always uneven. There's, uh, there's one that used to be on Netflix, I think it moved to, to Hulu now, called XX, that's a, yeah. a anthology yep. of female. Yeah focused horror movies started that but never finished it we definitely should pick yeah it. me too yeah um, i saw like the first one and the beginning of the second one and that's all i saw i also recommend for anthology if you're looking for something more comedic um on shutter they have a anthology called scare package you didn't like it because you thought no, it was dumb i didn't like but it. i thought it was pretty funny <laughs> and like, well, that pretty sounds good. like something i would like if danielle thought it was dumb and steven liked <laughs> it so. the glowing endorsement I just um, yesterday for the first day, I watched uh, Species on Hulu. I need to see that movie. So oh, that species. was super super fun and nice, silly. I like. Is that the first time you've ever seen Species? I like to mix up. I, I've seen it before. I just oh. forgot everything about it. It's not okay. a very memorable movie. I don't know why that movie's so memorable. To, memorable to me, I don't get it. Maybe but... as a woman, you saw yourself empowered by. Natasha Jenskinson, whatever. I think is. maybe I was just enthralled at an alien with nipple tentacles. I think that was really. Good. That makes sense. <laughs> I think I I think I like that movie more as an appreciator of H. R. Geiger's art than an actual horror film. My favorite piece of trivia about the movie is that H. R. Geiger designed this like dream train sequence where there's like this like horrific train for like yeah. for like four seconds in a dream sequence <laughs> and they wanted to cut it and not film it and not build it and he oh was God. like screw you I'm putting up my own money we're doing it we're putting it in the Just movie that four second train sequence <laughs> it wasn't that great guys I promise it was nice. spooky though it was spooky features a young Michelle Williams as an alien lady yeah, so many nice. Oscar winners Ben King's yeah the cast was the cast is stacked the cast is Alfred Molina stacked. Forrest Whitaker it's yeah. like whoa that's that's like that's like the the top of the list of really great actors who will also take any role yes. that sounds remotely fun. Yep, Ben Kingsley's the king of that. Those are the guys: Ben Kingsley, Forrest Whitaker, Alfred Molina. They'll do anything, but they're like super great actors. We got to get paid. Um, yesterday, I was feeling in the mood for an eighty slasher movie because those are some of my favorites. <laughs> nice. And so I discovered uh, this movie called Final Exam on Amazon Prime from nineteen eighty one, which is like just so hard trying to be a wannabe Halloween movie. Like the music is like trying yeah. so hard. He's underselling. And it's horrible. He's underselling how bad this is, Derek. <laughs> I just said it's horrible. No, no, no. But let me paint you a picture. This is a movie from the 80s that like like you could never make this film for many reasons i thought it now. was original i i i, I like the originality okay. they brought to it okay you could never make this movie for many reasons nowadays but especially for this so at one point in the film randomly even though this is a slasher movie about a man who stabs people okay randomly in the movie a guy is taking a test and all of a sudden in the quad, in the open square, a group of hooded people jump, Ski out, with mask ma people. jump out with machine guns and start <laughs> shooting all the students. So you're like, for a split second, you're like, oh no. This horror shoot. movie has a school shooting in it? it oh my God, this is shooting. crazy. And then I realized like two seconds later, oh my gosh, this is a prank. And he used this as a distraction. And sure enough, I was right. The fraternity thought it was a fun prank oh to God. fake murder five people in front of others, throw them into a They were van. pledges. They were in on it. It's hilarious. I just sat there like, how? Like, I know that this comes from a totally different world because after yeah. Columbine, there's no, yeah, no you can't, yeah. way you could ever do something like that. Yeah. But, oh man, it was. But and then they I mean, for all we know, that was actually funny at the time. Ugh. He Probably. used his, what's important is that plot-wise, they use the distraction to steal a test. Yeah, exactly. For the plot, it's very important. Yeah, 
No, I, 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 for, for my slasher day, I'm thinking I might do prom night because I've never seen prom night. Oh, prom oh. night's good. And that's like a big influential. Prom night's good, but prom night two, I think, is the more fun one. Oh, yeah. It has nothing to do with the first prom night. <laughs> nice. They just took the name because they were like, that movie made a dollar. Let's, <laughs> let's make sure we get that dollar. They like to do that a lot before this sort of like franchise machine that existed. When they did sequels, they had no plan. They were just like, we got to That's, we gotta that's what Troll 2 is. Troll 2 had nothing to do with the original that it's sequel to. <laughs> yeah. Um, we also watched a movie that was like just bad. It was on Hulu? <laughs> and it wasn't fun. And yeah. in the way that uh, Bad Exam was fun. Um, the final part, exam. Final exam. Pardon, pardon me. Yeah, I didn't say that. Yeah. Um, it was called The Prodigy. and it's from 2019. It's available right now. See, already with that name, it sounds like it's taking itself too seriously to be a good, fun, bad horror movie. I think it's a remake of an older 80s film, I yeah. think. And it's just not good because, like, it's just, like, I, I know that, like, you know, people get annoyed when you pick apart movies by using any form of logic. But, like, my problem is I hate when stories create their own rules and then constantly break them. As long as you adhere to your own internal logic, oh, you're fine. There was no but internal logic. Yeah. It's not a good movie. I don't even like waste yeah. time. It started off creepy, yeah. but then it just gets frustrating and frustrating. And yeah. Frustrating. And then you, the, the whole movie hinges on the idea that somebody is going to do regression therapy on a child but not record it. Yeah, like 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 you're doing okay, the, the plot psychoanalysis. Is, the plot of the movie is very simple. And not recording it. Basically, it's it's based on the idea of reincarnation. Yeah. And a serial killer with a penchant for chopping off women's hands is murdered at the same night that a young boy is born and his soul kind of like takes a hitchhike in the kid's body and because he's like unfinished, child's play but with a real child because yeah, yeah. because he has yeah. unfinished business because his last victim escaped before he could finish his job of cutting off her other hand and killing her oh, um, boy. and so uh, the older the little boy gets the more the soul latches on and starts to take control of his body and do really terrible things this is a premise that could have really creepy, cool yeah. sort of, but it's so poorly executed. Yeah. That it just I mean, based on the premise, it sounds like it could be great, but yeah. obviously but it's, it's so not. so poorly executed. Because yeah. they make the characters so abysmally thin. And, yeah. And they don't care. This thin as in, like, thin as in, like, two-dimensional? Oh, super. This is a movie that literally never tells you what his parents do for work, even though they send him to <laughs> super expensive smart boy private school. You're yeah. Like, what do these parents do? Yeah. Um, this is a movie that has a therapist who, like Steven said, it does regression therapy and believes in reincarnated souls, but doesn't have a recorder for his sessions. He's <laughs> doing hypnosis, but he's not recording anybody. Yeah. This is a movie that for shock value and scare value, they had a young underage actor boy say he was going to put a man's uh, private parts in his mouth to frame him for child. Yeah, like this poor actor had oh to God. Not even very good, and I don't have like a problem. Like if it's a great movie, you yeah, say no, it. But no, I'm saying that I mean like if you if you have a movie that really understands what it's doing and the story it's telling, mm -hmm. if they're gonna use something like that for shock value, it's gonna mean something to the exactly. story. Exactly. Like yeah. this one thing, I am not adverse to controversial things happening in a film. Right. For the con to the if the if the story if it matters to the story. If it, if it, if it makes the story but better. But none of the st exactly the story is not made better. The story is not made better by having that poor actor boy say that disgusting line, and like, it means nothing and ha and, and has no effect on anything. Yeah. Wow. And the ultimate value of the movie is just to try to be as horribly bleak as possible. Yeah. Oh, so, that's the worst part too. Is it? Like, yeah. I mean, if you're gonna make a bad horror movie, it better be fun. 
Like, don't and, make a self-serious bad horror movie. You know, then it it's, also falls into a thing of, of, like, a lot of modern horror, which is the constant obsession with twisting and twisting. So you so you outsmart an audience rather than just kind of lead them down a good path so that the story... Like wrestling. Happen. Like yeah. wrestling does. The wrestling does this all the time. They're always trying to trick people and, like... Try to try to be as unpredictable as they can, so that people can't predict what's going to happen. Instead of just telling a story from A to B to C, and it turns out being, you know, their stories end up being from A to W to fucking <laughs> three. And it's like, what are you doing? I know, and it's also just it takes away any emotional impact that the story has. And and I was kind of so it was kind of an interesting thing to watch as just like an example of. Like, Species was a better movie. I'm going to be real with you. And Species was goofy. But Species had more natural-born tension and kind of like an understanding of the character and character development relationship-wise between the characters than this movie did. And it was just very interesting to see, like, how this... Because I think this is... I really do. I think this is a modern horror problem. It's a modern show problem in general. But mm-hmm. especially horror too, like people want to outsmart the audience when yeah. they don't realize that if you take the audience on a good enough journey, anything you do will be shocking because it the characters matter to them, and it's you know what I mean. Like it's not well, not only out. that, but even if they can predict what's going to happen, they're They'll still, still gonna be, exactly enjoy like it. just because I know that something's gonna happen doesn't mean that that means the movie that it shouldn't bad. happen. Yeah, right, exactly. exactly. And that the movie is bad, like you outsmarting me by having to go like this and fuck up your own story isn't you being a good writer. Right. And, like, that, let yeah. me tell you something. When you were saying that about species, I, I, it made me think of, let me tell you something. You know what movie that one of the like most ridiculous fucking movies that like the more I watch it, the more I realize like this is a well-told story is Tenacious D in the Pick of Destiny. They tell that story really well. Yeah, Every yeah. element of it is for, has meaning and makes sense. And like, it's ridiculous and out of this world and like stupid as fuck and the humor is stupid as fuck. But they tell the story really well, actually. Exactly. Like the story- It follows the hero's journey. It, exactly. exactly. It, follows, it follows the story the way it's supposed to follow. You know what I mean? Like you get to that point. Right. And- and, and like species is, sm- what's crazy to me is that like a movie, the movie species that literally has, <laughs> that has a woman rip another woman's spine out in a bathroom. <laughs> that has oh, nice. like, Mortal Kombat has shit. just the most silly, I just, like that movie had more of a sense of storytelling and how to like, it answered its own questions because like one right. of the big things in species is like they don't know what she looks like because she evolved right. so quickly and then when she becomes Natasha Henstridge it's like she could be any tall blonde woman in LA um and so but yet in some point in the story it was really funny because Stephen hadn't seen it in so long and I I spoiled him he's like you can tell me I'm like Alfred Molina ends up knocking up the alien and he's like, how? Don't they know what she looks like? Aha! Her image is always perfectly obscured on video and pictures. So they never recognize her. Thanks to blurry then, faces. Then wow. they see her one time. One guy sees her one time. One of the Forrest Whitaker's character. And then she dies. And she dyes her hair brown. No. Boom! unrecognizable but it works because nobody none of the people in the crew had gotten a decent look at her face you know what i mean that's such a bad joke but it's executed so so well so by the time and then the best here's the best part the best part is she doesn't want to fuck alfred molina she wants to fuck michael madsen but Michael Madsen's character Honestly. starts hooking up with the other woman. So she goes into Alfred Molina's hotel room to like listen in on what they're doing. He walks into the room and she goes, well, you'll do. I and guess then you. she's like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, he's and he so, just accepts the nerd. Because he's 
such a nerd who can't get laid. He's like, I never thought this would happen to someone like me. Okay. And then, oh, it's the best day of my life. And then he dies. But, you know, it's... it's it's so goofy but it's done in such a way that like yeah. you feel like the movie earned its own another, another adorable yeah, thing right. about the movie is that Forrest Whitaker is an empath yeah so he can like okay. read people's like emotions and like he can intuit things but he nice. can apparently intuit things off of like old videotapes <laughs> <laughs> he can tell you what people are feeling on old videotapes but it's just like Things that you would notice, like, yeah, yeah, yeah she no. does look frustrated. But here's, come, here, like, this is when the movie's fun and silly and, like, and, and, it, and when it breaks its rules, it's for the purpose of storytelling, but in a way that you forgive it. So, like, he's right. empath on a videotape, but yet when the alien is literally hiding in the bushes. Right in front of him. 20 it. feet away, all he can do is kind of stare into the bush, like, I feel something weird, but it can't be. <laughs> and then just walk away and not tell anyone. I had a weird feeling, guys. <laughs> like- See, I mean, and even even though even that, like, those are the kinds of leaps in logic that it's fun to laugh at. Like, it's yeah. not it it's not yeah. cynical. It's not self serious. It's just like we have to bend these rules we made a little bit to move the story forward. And isn't it funny that like it's 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 not completely outside of the realm of believability that we've created in this container but it's it's stretching things a bit but in a way that that makes you laugh and that kind of you kind of forgive it for that totally yeah. any other uh well this is actually making me think of you know what my favorite probably my favorite bad horror movie would be, uh, have you ever seen Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2? No, I haven't. I've been wanting to. Oh my God, it's so hilariously ridiculous. Whoa. And uh, fuck, what's his name? The Burn Notice guy. Um, Bruce Campbell? What? what? The guy on Burn Notice? Yeah. I don't know that. I don't know his name. Fuck. I know Bruce Campbell. I know Bruce Campbell from Burn no, Notice. No, not Bruce Campbell. Yeah, no. Um, no, the other guy. But he he he's he's like younger, and he he's has a role in this. He's like a fucking like teenage high school fucking douchebag. It's hilarious. Oh my god, that movie is so hilarious. I would definitely highly recommend it for anybody who loves uh, delightfully terrible horror B movies. I love it's so good. I love a funny horror movie like the. It's and it's not, all like it's the really funny. The begin the beginning premise of the movie is like these people are like it's it's people in the town and the the guy the main character from the burn notice guy is actually one of many people who are trying to make money off of the publicity that was brought there so he's like selling Blair Witch t shirts and shit it's hilarious yeah like that meta <laughs> stuff yeah That's hot. That's yeah yeah it's about the town after the Blair Witch movie comes out. That's hot. I, I, I yeah. should add it to our list. Yeah, we should. Definitely would recommend that. I'm going to probably watch it pretty soon. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to, I'm, I'm trying to get to, um, the in about 10 minutes, they're going to be showing um, House on Haunted Hill on TCM. And I want to see if I can live tweet that. Yeah, the original. Yeah, it's TCM. So yeah. And they'll, I'm sure they have, they'll have like a little thing before it too. That's the, one of the things that's cool about TCM. They always like talk about the movie first. So I definitely well, want to check that out. Our cauldron of podcast is chock full of creepies and crawlies. Yeah, man. Old delicious episode. Yes. Thank you very much, D-Rock. Yeah. Do we, do we want to do this again uh, next Friday? Kind of do an update on... What we're what we're doing for Spooktober? I think we should try. Yeah. That would be a good yeah, thing. Yeah, for sure. This was smooth. Yeah, um, this is good. Because we don't have that much to talk about today in terms of Spooktober because it's only two days old. So by next week, we'll have a whole week's worth of gems, of suggestions and reminiscence, reminiscence. Yeah, for sure. Our favorite horror movie things that we like. Yeah, Thank totally. You. Danny, for joining us. No problem. <laughs> Wow.
Where am I going? I have been your host, Steven. Thank you at Midnight Hounds for only interrupting us once. You can check them out over on Instagram. Uh, you can check us out on Twitter at Vundablog or at Vundacast. Um, and that's everything. That's all the links I have. Um, so at, at Vundacast is going to be where I'll be live tweeting a bunch of stuff throughout the month. So definitely check that out. Drop us a line. Send us your suggestions. Vundablog at gmail.com. Um, and remember, kids, um, when uh, a Mexican La Llorona ghost comes into your house, make sure to have some absorbent towels or something so that you can soak up whatever... All the tears? Creep, the, the tears, tears, the tears. That's whatever, the tears. whatever creepy tears or whatever flooding. And make sure you gone. have seeds of the fire tree. <laughs> Essential. Essential. Yeah. Hey, I love it. Hey, Wundercast? Wonder Give yeah. it up for Wundercast, man. What an adorable name. You're listening to the Wundercast. What's up, everybody? This is Jason David Frank, Green Ranger. You're listening to Wundercast. We got it. to the Vondacast.